I'm Ann Jeanette Levy, and this is Simply Medicine on 55KRC, the talk station. So I've seen women, um, actually on Twitter, amazingly enough, uh, people share a lot of information on Twitter, as you know, and Facebook, uh, discussing, you know, just kind of mentioning like, oh, I get a urinary tract infection once or twice a year, and it got me to thinking maybe we should be talking about this. Uh, so joining me to discuss urinary tract infections in women and how we can prevent them and the impact of these things is Dr. Rebecca Rotersheimer. She is a urologist at the Urology Group here in Cincinnati. So Dr. Rotersheimer, welcome back to Simply Medicine. Thanks for having me. So I, I've had a urinary tract infection before that, you know, actually developed into a kidney infection. It was awful. I mean, it was years and years ago, and I'm probably too oversharing. But these things can be really painful. So talk to me, if you would, about, first of all, what, what is a UTI? So UTI stands for urinary tract infection. So it's an infection, generally it's a bacterial infection that can affect anywhere in the urinary tract. So the urethra, the bladder, the kidneys make up the urinary tract. So an infection uh, of any part of that constitutes a urinary tract infection. They're really, really common. Probably about 60% of women have had a urinary tract infection, but the most common would be a bladder infection. So why are these so common? Um, that's a great question, and, and we don't know for sure, but it, there are a lot of um, different contributory factors. Certainly, um, being a little bit dehydrated can increase your risk for infection, so your best defense against urinary tract infection would be frequent urination, so drinking a lot of water, urinating frequently would help flush it out. Not to give uh, too much information, but a lot of the, the reason that you get urinary tract infections is bacteria from your bowel kind of lingers in your genital area and can get up into your urethra and your bladder and that causes the infections. So keeping good bowel habits is really important to help reduce your risk of infection. People who tend to be more constipated or have more diarrhea are certainly at a higher risk of urinary tract infections. And also urinary tract infections can be related to sexual activity as well. Oh, interesting. So first of all, it sounds like to me you just need to be you know, take good care of the area down there, wipe properly after a bowel movement, front to back, <laughs> and, you know, just make sure you've, you're cleaned up. And then after sexual activity, they always say, you know, sh you, women should be like urinating right afterwards, right? Right. So that hasn't actually been proven in studies. I think it's probably a difficult study to do, but it makes good sense. I generally will tell my patients to urinate before and after sex. There are some patients who feel like they get a UTI pretty much every time they have sex. And those oh. patients could benefit from, I'll sometimes put them on a low dose antibiotic that they'll just take right before or right after they have sex. And usually that will help reduce the recurrence of the urinary tract infection. Interesting. Um, is it true that cranberry juice, or is this like a wives tale or something <laughs> like cranberry juice is good for a, you know, a UTI? So that's a great question, and I get asked that all the time, and kind of the jury's still out. There are some studies that show that there's a benefit, and there are some studies that show there's not much, much benefit. The reason that we think cranberry juice or cranberry pills can decrease the risk of urinary tract infections is they contain a chemical, it's called, um, I might butcher the pronunciation, but it's proanthocyanidin, and that is supposed to help prevent bacteria from adhering to each other and also adhering to the lining of the bladder. I think the bottom line is that cranberry might help. It definitely will not hurt. So I do suggest that my patients take cranberry pills. I'm not a big fan of cranberry juice because it has a lot of sugar in it. Mm. And I think you know, for your overall health, it's important not to have too much sugar. So I would um, suggest a cranberry supplement over a cranberry juice. We're here talking with Dr. Rebecca Rotersheimer. She's a urologist uh, at the Urology Group here in Cincinnati. And we're talking about urinary tract infections in women, which are pretty common. So what can the long-term effects of urinary tract infections be? Because it sounds like it sounds like you can prevent it. Maybe not all the time, but if you're you're practicing good hygiene and, and, and drinking lots of water daily and um, things like that, that sounds like that can go a long way to preventing them. It can, and in general, a bladder infection is pretty benign. It's very painful, like you said. It's um, it's irritating. It, it really affects your quality of life, but long-term is not going to, in general, cause any problems. But if, like you said, you would let a bladder infection kind of linger and it turns into a kidney infection, that can cause a lot more long-term trouble. Repeated kidney infections, especially in children or the elderly, 
can lead to kidney damage or can lead to sepsis where you get really, really sick and you need to be hospitalized. That's extraordinarily rare though. A general bladder infection usually is pretty benign, although quite uncomfortable and is easily treatable with a short course of antibiotics. You know, when I had my kidney infection, and this was like back in, I think, 08 or something, I I mean, I had no idea I was sick until like that day. I had a stomach pain and I thought I just slept funny. Mm-hmm. Or it wasn't even, it was in my stomach, not in my back or anything. And then I went mm-hmm. I went to the ER and they put me on like Dilaudid, which is a some kind of opioid. And I, I mean, I was in so much pain, but thank God I got it. Are there symptoms readily apparent a lot or, I mean... Well, usually people with that happens to, which I've heard that story relatively frequently, um, I think generally because they've never had a urinary tract infection before, just don't even realize that they have the symptoms. Sometimes they might say, now looking back, I had kind of cloudy urine and I was urinating a lot more frequently and maybe it burned a little, but I was just too busy, so I kind of ignored it. But a lot of people who have that experience like you had where they get really sick with a kidney infection will then start to be a lot more aware of their bladder symptoms so that it doesn't happen again. So uh, drinking lots of water, um, good hygiene, those are really the things that are going to prevent this. Yep, and definitely bowel habits are important. And I also wanted to add that after menopause, women are a lot more um, susceptible to urinary tract infections and And a lot of that has to do with the change in the vaginal environment. So the bacteria that live there prior to menopause can't live there anymore because of just the change in the environment with the lack of estrogen. So one thing that's very, very helpful in postmenopausal women is using vaginal estrogen cream that can really help reduce the risk of UTIs in that population. Interesting. And is that over the counter or? No, that's a, that's a prescription. Okay. So women, postmenopausal women should talk to their doctors about that. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Rebecca Rotersheimer, we appreciate you coming back on the show uh, to talk about UTIs. Uh, Thanks so much for your time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Coming up next.